We are down to the last leg of the startup journey on the Big Spark. We started off with 24 startups from all over Southeast Asia, and it's now down to these five. Step Robotics, Arcopay, Celevate Technologies, Tanang AI, and Far Life Plus. They have been through the ringer. From stage one, the quick pitch. It feels like you're trying to tackle a lot. So I think you should reevaluate that. To emerging victorious in stage two, the in depth pitch. Congratulations, you're moving on to the final big pitch. So, who amongst these five will clinch the seed funding worth up to $1 million? But first, they will have to pitch to these eight venture capitalists. This is a very crucial time for us to get the exposure and connection to so many VCs. And we really need their support. The finishing line is in sight. It's time now for the final sprint, stage three, the big pitch. Lives will be changed. And dreams made possible. So get ready. This is the big spot. Hello everyone, I'm your host Diana Sir and welcome to the finale of the Big Spark. Now, this is what the startups have been working towards, the final big pitch. Our resident judges have been working hard to mentor them on their journey, so let's bring on the judges now. Thank you, Diana. So, Rosh, what exactly are you feeling right now? I'm so excited and thrilled. I feel like a big mama with her kids going to university. What do you hope to see from the five finalists tonight? We hope to see a better, bigger version of themselves today. Yes, and we thank you both for your hard work. Please take your seats now. Thank you. Now, the judges will not be weighing in on any decisions today because the spotlight falls on these lovely people seated right at the front. They are the venture capitalists who will determine what share, if at all, of the $1 million funding each of the finalists will take home tonight. Anuj Golecha from Venture Catalysts Plus Plus. UC Salovara, Antler. Muli Ravi, Tin Man Capital. Vanessa Ho, Fintech Nation. John Sharp, Hatchaplas. Visa Kanan, Saison Capital. Neeraj Tiagi, WFC and Avenir Ventures. Sebastian Togalang, Rigel Faro Capital. All right, let's get started with the first pitch. Now, you could say that this startup has a good grip on things. Representing Snap Robotics, it's its co founder and co inventor of the multimodal soft gripper, Sai Krishna Dantu. Hi, Daddy. Hi, how are you? Uh, I have a good news. I got into the finale of Big Spark. Oh, good. Congrats, Sina. Thank Very you. Nice. Thank you. Good news. <laughs> Since childhood, I have always been fascinated by robots. They have capabilities which surpass us sometimes and we can make use of those capabilities to develop new technology. Making the multimodal soft gripper itself started as a research project for my lab. That's my master's thesis topic. The commercialization journey started in 2022. So the overall journey of Big Spark has been very enriching for me. I got to meet so many interesting startups different from my field and it's always thrilled to learn about the other technologies as well. During the quick pitch, uh, not all the judges were convinced of our idea. The commercial business model needs probably a little bit more understanding. Where you think you could be more competitive as compared to similar products out there. Thank you for your feedback. So during the in-depth pitch that I came up with the parameters, I was able to make a very clear distinction of why we are different. 
the challenge is to find affordable grasping automation solution. Again, like your average food SME. What kind of cost savings are we talking about? Only one gripper does the function of four or mm -hmm. five grippers. Mm -hmm. So that, like, that's like straight away 75% cost savings from the end effector point of view. Being one of the five finalists out of 24 startups, it's a very good motivation for me to pursue this with more rigor as well. So was it also Snap Robotics has been running on grants. The funding from the BigSpark is very important for us because it would be a first-hand validation from investors. The floor is yours. Take it away. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Today, we are uh, presenting uh, our technology multimodal soft ripper with an ask of 500,000 SGD for a stake of 10% equity in our company. The problem with the current automation technologies is that if there is a requirement for five tasks, you would actually need to buy five separate robotic arms or expensive tool changers, which is fine for the big players, but it's not worth it for the SMEs. Snap Robotics is here, introducing the world's most economical robotic hand, the multimodal soft gripper, bio-inspired using the dexterity of human hands, which allows it to change its grasping mode on the fly without tool changers. This unique capability of multimodality allows the same gripper to be utilized for granular items like pasta and even delicate items like a strawberry without crushing it. This is what makes this technology a minimalistic, affordable solution for SMEs. We would primarily be offering this solution on a subscription model for the food SMEs, but we also have the option to directly sell the grippers to the automation companies. Our ask of 500,000 SGD would be primarily be utilized for conducting pilot tests over the next 18 months. This will help us to land our first paying customer. It is also applicable in other industries like waste segregation, high mix packaging, urban farming. However, we are focusing initially on the food packaging as our beachhead market because we have the competitive edge. Thank you. What's your plan to take it to commercialization? Okay, because you have mentioned that the first paid customer you are expecting in 2025, you have a product right now. Why are you not getting very aggressive in terms of like getting the customers? So uh, right now we have the hardware sorted out. We need to develop the software plugin for this gripper so that we can sell it as an end consumer product. But we need to evaluate its performance in real scenarios. And that's where the pilot test will come to our rescue. So are these uh, pilots are paid? One pilot is interested to like pay us, but like we don't have a formal LOI. Uh, once we incorporate our company, then we can proceed with that. Could you say a bit more about the uh, competitive landscape around this? Because there's similar products out there. There have been other players in the market, but the problem is 90% of the soft grippers that are out there, they are based on pressurized air, and they need to pump in air in order to actuate the gripper. Whereas we are using vacuum, which is uh, proven to be much more durable and it is also safe. The second differentiating factor is we are multimodal, which other soft gripper companies can't do. Can you also elaborate because this is uh, catering to the food industry, can it also do sorting? We have done waste sorting. So the idea is that the material itself is very inert. So we can like literally use it for electronics, plastic, paper, and even we can sterilize it. So we believe that sorting is not a very big problem and it can easily do that. Okay, thank you. Sai Krishna, how are you feeling right now? Uh, I'm excited. <laughs> you are still excited. <laughs> okay, well, I'm excited for you too. Let's look forward to the results. Well sure, done. Sure, Thank you. Thank you. And let's go for a quick break, but when we come back, we will hear from the two ladies from ArcoPay. They'll be sharing about their one-stop financial solution for construction businesses. See you later. Here at Hatch, we are constantly on the lookout for innovative startups operating across the globe. They have a good understanding of their problem space, technological mastery, and game-changing ideas that have profound impact on communities. The Big Spark Change Makers Award goes to one such company that not only meets but exceeds those expectations as they leverage AI to secure the safety and resiliency of supply chain in the Asian food industry. Our heartiest congratulations goes to Farmio.
Thank you so much, Hatch, for this incredible honor. At Bamio, we are driven by ambitions of revolutionizing the food supply chain and making a positive impact on communities globally. Receiving the Big Spark Changemaker Award is a testament to our commitment to innovations, technology mastery, and addressing the critical challenge faced by the food supply chain industry. We look forward to the continued journey of making a difference. Welcome back to The Big Spark. Now, this next startup provides a one-stop financial solution for construction businesses and is helmed by two female co-founders. I hope you're ready for some girl power because here they are. Please welcome Laura Lukito and Azri Anjasari of Acopay. Since I was little, my dad always took me around to his project site and I didn't realize that the construction industry kind of like grew inside of me. Then I met Asri from Antler and we kind of combined our passion both in fintech and construction space and that's how Arcopay was born. I have three kids. My son is almost 20 years old. The second is 15 and the last one is 10 years old. It's just quite difficult to manage the daily routine as a mom and also as a co-founder. Hi, Kakak, Ade. Hi. Mami masuk ke another round, jadi Mami mau ke grand final. Yay! Yay! Congrats. Good luck with Kak Laura. I just want to show my kid how to be independent woman, no matter how difficult the situation and the condition. The journey of the Big Spark has been really exciting. Starting from a quick pitch, I think it was just very overwhelmed, but we got a lot of great feedback from the judges. Where I want to dig deeper into would be in how you get your funds, how do you keep your cost of funds low, and also on the risk management part. We were able to join the master class too and learn a lot of new things particularly um, on the prop tech startup. We feel proud that we are able to be one of the top five contestants for the final pitch. We're pretty nervous, but we're confident. We believe that we're gonna get that funding from the PCs because we believe in this business model and we have the right team to scale this business up. Hello, everyone. We're from Arcopay, a one-stop financial solution for small and medium-sized construction businesses in Indonesia. Today, we're asking for $500,000 funding in our company for 15% equity. Our journey was inspired with a combination of Asri's strong background in banking and two times FinTech founder, and my passion in construction industry while working alongside with my father, a hard-working contractor for over two decades. Our family have been through roller coaster rides, we went bankrupt in 1998 and up until now become a developer in building residentials, hotels, and hospitals. Construction industry market size is huge and contributes about 122 billion US dollars towards Indonesian GDP. And we would like to help the other construction businesses in Indonesia through our vast network of lending partners, hundreds of suppliers within our ecosystem. We provide flexible financing options and affordable materials price. Our revenue business model is pretty straightforward. We charge admin fee up to 3% and service fee at a fixed rate up to 5%. The risk mitigation process range from starting with legal due diligence, credit risk assessment, multiple collection strategies, and last but not least, diversification in our portfolio asset. Throughout this past month, we have successfully dispersed over 150,000 US dollars while maintaining our portfolio asset with 0% NPL. So join us in building together with construction businesses in Indonesia. Thank you so much and great to see an all-female team at the Big Spark. Uh, my key question here is you are an intermediary between a lender and the construction company. What service do you provide in the middle that the lender can't do it themselves? We provide the credit score and the credit risk assessment and then we do like on-site verification as well. We check on the project site. So when we deliver the leads for the lending partners, it's uh, good leads, basically. Why can't they do it themselves? Oh, for the construction side? Uh, from Actually, the lender side. Like uh, the typically of the risk, 
mitigation or the risk process, uh, usually for the borrower without any kind of the credit history. They never get the facility from the bank or from the other financial services. So we try to facilitate between the lender and the borrower itself. So one of the biggest problems of fintech companies is the default rate. So how do you ensure that you have a very low default rate? We have a lot of the collection strategy and put it in our collection policy, such as we have the prolongation uh, services and also reminder, seven days before the due date, three days before the due date, and the due date. What are some of the construction-specific metrics you're looking at for your credit scoring process? We only tap into the projects that's already been built up to 20 to 70% only. Um, we avoid the retention program from the contractors, like just how long they've been established, the transaction history with the suppliers. I personally feel I think nobody uh, manages money better than women, so I think congratulations <laughs> for that. Looking at your founder's pedigree, you come from construction background. What is that insight that you have, which other lenders may not have, just to gauge the right profile? From my experience, mainly we heavily deal with a lot of operations that we don't really care about like the admin and financing stuff. So there's a lot of like delayed payments from the payer, not because of us. So I've experienced the pain point and I would love to help those contractors out there to not go bankrupt again. Thank you for the questions, VCs. So Laura, Azri, any final word from you? Finally. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> Finally yes. done. I'll see you back here again where we have the results. Thank you. Next, we have a scientist with an unwavering passion for animals using technology. Please give it up for Dr. Vignesh Krishnan Kuti, founder and CEO of Celevate Technologies. I remember this picture. Because mm. I asked Acha to kiss her mom. Mm. <laughs> As a teenager, I learned that we are all responsible for the lower species like the animal. So we should not ill-treat them. So that kind of started my framework um, to what led to, to salivate. I had my baby in 2023. Having a child is also like a startup. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of sleepless nights. Being a father, naturally I have the pressure to do well enough so I can give my child a comfortable life and this can only happen if I'm successful. So I need to be razor sharp focused about what I'm doing at Celiwaste such that we don't waste time, we don't waste resources and we actually deliver. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. So welcome, Selvit, and then you walk out to this position. Oh, here, there is. Yeah, stand beside. We passed through 19 other startups. Honestly, it's, it's actually very humbling. Thank you for taking all of our suggestions into consideration. Definitely. This is a big improvement from your first pitch. Thank you. My big dream for Selvit Technologies is we want to be a key player in disrupting the use of animals and moving to using cells and to make a lot of money in the process. Hey everyone, our goal is to enable the reduction of animal husbandry. That is the raising and slaughtering of animals for our need. And many of the processes are extremely unethical and unsustainable. One of the alternatives is to use cells because animals are fundamentally made of cells. And so you can use cells to derive many of these products. Many companies are trying to do this. However, there are some issues. For example, the cost is extremely high. We have a host of technologies on our platform that allow our clients to lower their cost, to scale up uh, 2D and 3D, and we only use cell-based or plant-based ingredients without going to the slaughter. We have customers in many sectors, for example, the skincare sector, in the cultivated leather sector, and in the cultivated meat sector. So we have product market fit. And we choose to cultivate the skincare industry as our beachhead market. The overall market size is over $6 billion. Today, we have more orders than we can meet, and we have reached our limit. As such, we are raising our seed round of $3.3 million. This seed round is for our commercial expansion, our R&D, and for new products. However, for the Big Spark, we are looking to raise $350,000 
for 2.5% of the company. This enables us to expand our laboratory, to build our products to generate more revenue. And I also want to leverage on your expertise to realize the potential of Salivate to become a world-class company. Thank you. So, Dr. Viknesh, thank you for the presentation and uh, very interesting space. The price is one of the challenges of also your peers, right? How do you ensure that your price is lower than the competitor? Can you elaborate on your revenue and is it uh, right now already a profitable business or, or is it still a projection? We are not a meat company. Rather, we enable those companies to lower their costs and to scale up. So we give them the tools. We use, uh, firstly, agriculture materials, which have a lower price point. And at the moment, we are buying it off the shelf. But as we scale, we can go direct to farms to, to bring the price further down. We are not a profitable business, but we are making revenue. So we are working with a skincare company. The problem we are facing now is that the orders they are making from us is more than what we can do, which is why we need to scale up. And one of um, the things I want to do is to leverage on people with commercial expertise, right, to help me to take my go-to-market strategy forward. So first a comment actually on you. Uh, doctor, you look like a rock star. <laughs> 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 so, I like your clarity, confidence. Uh, how do you see your company in the next like, two to three years? So, for now, we want to focus on the cell based skincare. We want to be a leader in that space. People in that space should know Salivate because everybody is using Salivate. From there, we want to expand to the other verticals that we already have. We do have requests from cultivated meat companies. And in my understanding, over the next five years, that will start to pick up. We are also working um, in the back to enter into the cell therapy space, right? For example, diabetic wounds. But those industries have a higher barrier of entry, right? So we want to secure our foundation first before we go into those industries. Great answer. Thank you, doctor. So um, my quick question is, who owns that IP? In terms of patents, we have three. Uh, the first one is when I was a postdoctoral researcher in the university, so it's owned by the university. The second IP is owned by Salivate. And the third IP we are licensing in, that is also owned by the university. The provision for actually buying the IP from the university is there, and we definitely want to do this as we expand. So, and the ones you use for the skincare, they're... That belongs to Salivate. All right, Viknesh, well done. You, what do you think? Do you think that the VCs have any interest in your startup? I think they all do. <laughs> <laughs> all the best to you. I will see you later. Thank you so much, Diana. And we're headed for another commercial break. But when we come back, let's hear it from Tenang AI, a startup that wants to help tackle mental health issues using AI, of course. See you later. At UOB, we support aspiring entrepreneurs in their ambitions to build big with our digital and sustainable banking capabilities. We are delighted to present the Big Spark Financial Inclusion Award to a company making financial advice and education available to women across Southeast Asia. The award goes to Pixie. Thank you so much to UOB Bank for this amazing recognition of the work that me and my team at Bixi are trying to do, which is bring women into the financial fold. This really not only is a great recognition of our efforts, but it's proof that women are a marketable market worth addressing and that the inclusion of half the sky into traditional finance is not only the $6 trillion reason, but it's a really good reason to do it as well. So we're so grateful for this award, for this recognition and for this platform. Welcome back. You're watching The Big Spark and this is the final big pitch. Mental well-being has become a worldwide concern over the last few years. And this next startup has made it their mission to help tackle mental health issues using AI. By patient in making mental health care more accessible and affordable for Gen Z in millennials basically began when I was a psychologist. There are a lot of demands but the number of psychologists is not enough. So we have to make something out of uh, technology so that more people can get help. 
So the way me and Andre complement each other is that he's been building startup twice. So he really knows how to create a strong foundation for our business so that we can grab the users more easily. Wow, thank you, thank you so much. Yes! I think the Big Spark has strengthened our chemistry and our bond as co-founders. Before the Big Spark, I was the face of the company. Now the world actually oh see God. both of the co-founders in front. Oh my God! Makes me feel very happy and proud and grateful to be actually in the finale. This is our last chance to actually share about the Nang AI to the VCs. We are more than prepared. I hope we can get the seed funding on the big pits. Hey VCs, I'm Andre, business and operation in Tenang AI. I'm Salma, a clinical psychologist for five years in Indonesia. And today, we're seeking $1 million funding for 20% of equity in our company to achieve 250K of users, 350K dollar of revenue. Gen Z and millennials are our future, but their struggle with low to medium daily stress and getting help is challenging for them. And even worse, there are only 2,000 psychologists for the whole 270 million populations of Indonesia. We are here to change that. Tenang AI is a lifeline for Gen Z and millennials, making their life happier and more productive. 80% cheaper, 24-7 available, personalized, and safe. We also ensure that they actually can talk with our AI in daily language of Indonesia and book the session seamlessly. Since we launched in March 2023, we already grabbed early traction to help 25,000 Genesis and millennials all around Indonesia. And you know what? It's organically, without ads. It's a potential number to aim 10 million US dollar in 2028 with 5 million users. In Tenang AI, it's not just investment. It's a commitment to make an impact to Genesis and millennials all around the world. Thank you. You're offering this service in Bahasa, or you're actually building or attempting to build a Bahasa-style large language model. We do have it in two languages, English and colloquial language of Indonesia. For the Indonesia itself, it can understand abbreviation, it can understand slang language, basically like chatting to a friend, it gives emoji as well. Because we do have our own proprietary data from the telehealth that we've done also for the last one year. So it really connects with the users and what um, actually happen in psychologists and the users itself. So we have our own data. Can you elaborate what's your business model? How are you making revenue and what are your cost and margins? Yeah. Currently, our business model is the subscription base. It's daily and monthly for the AI. All of the 400 uh, paying customers are on a daily subscription. So we are currently still exploring what kind of business model that fits directly because we understand now that they chat with our AI three times in a day. But in the future, we are also exploring on a B2B to C side because we are currently on progress on collaborating with one of the biggest pharmacy also in Indonesia to actually help their Gen Zs and millennials employee. My question is on the more ethical side. If your AI detects, like, say, this is a very critical condition that has escalated, right? How much intervention would you do, say, if this person has gotten to the point of maybe even suicidal, right? So we are actually put safety in our hearts since the beginning. So when the users actually come into our app, they check the box, the usage policy, that they understand that this is not for something um, that is high, severe. But if AI actually detect that the person is suicidal or something that is more severe, the AI will flag the responses or the message and help book the session with the psychologist immediately. Big round of applause for Tanang AI. Salma, Andre, you have done an amazing job. Are you feeling good right now? Yes, very yeah, good. Thank you. All good. <laughs> thank you. 
Our final startup for the evening is a pair of pharmacists with a combined practice experience of 35 years. Far Life Plus are developing medicated oral foam. Now let's meet the founder and COO, Professor Chan Sui Yong and CEO Tan Po Lei. What I love about pharmacy is that you can see many doctors, but if you don't take the medicine, then you'll never get well. So I think it is the magic bullet. After practicing as a pharmacist, I decided to come back to NUS to do PhD under Prof Chen. This medicated oral film project was actually the focus of Bowling's PhD work. The journey of being a startup has not been easy. There were times that money was running out, but I think we are seeing light. The very first time we stood in front of the judges was a very nerve-wracking experience. We... sorry. Congratulations, you're moving on to the final big pitch. We are still recovering from the surprise that we have made it to the top five because some of them are actually award-winning entrepreneurs. We are the newbies, uh, the noobs. <laughs> I think it's a great achievement. We definitely feel very confident now. This is we are coming for your investment. Have you ever given medications to children? We have. It always ends with three S's. Screaming, spilling and spitting. <laughs> and then it gets even more stressful when you have to give the medication by injection. So we have our product that will drive away all the drama and trauma in your homes, at the clinics and the hospital because it's easy to take and quick to give. It is edible, thin, light, flexible, and it will deliver an accurate dose. How it works, you just paste the phlegm inside your mouth, the phlegm will release the medicine, and the medicine will be absorbed by the body, and then you feel much better. Our business model involves the sales of premixed powders of our films to local hospitals. Regulatory approval is not required. Our business model also involves the manufacturing and sales of finished films. For this, regulatory approval is required. We're asking for $1 million funding in Farlife Plus for 20% equity. This will enable us to obtain relevant certification, scale up production, as well as to conduct R&D in order to reach more patients in a $370 billion global market for alternative drug delivery systems. Thank you. Wonderful presentation. You made it so clear and obvious why this is a problem and why your thing works. Why isn't anyone else doing this? Yeah, it's really a no-brainer, right? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> because uh, why would you want to make tablets and capsules, you know, when you can just have a phlegm? Well, I, I feel that the old technology for making phlegms has not worked. Because if you look up the Health Sciences Authority, the register of therapeutic products. They have 5,427 products registered as of last year. And out of that, only two oral films are listed. So there's a lot of problems with the old technology to make films with accurate doses. But we have that technology. So where do you see in the next five years, do you see 80% of your revenue coming from the kits or is it going to come from the finished films? Yeah, it will be from the premixed powder because we're already collecting revenue from the premixed powder and also from training the pharmacy staff how to make our films. And in the process, we also get more human data to substantiate our finished films registration. It's very fascinating. I mean, it looks like we are in a classroom and talking to our teacher. <laughs> so, I think all of us are curious because it's a great product. But what's your strategy? How to make this really big, popular, reachable to millions of people. Our go-to-market strategy for the finished film is actually to form partnerships with pharma companies and then we will um, leverage on their manufacturing capabilities as well as their distribution network for the sales of our finished films. 
Thank you. Well done, Pauline and Prof. So, Thank Prof, you what's your sense of the sentiments on the ground? Oh, we are very heartened that uh, everybody agrees that medicated oral films are much needed. All right. I wish you the very best. All five startups have presented their pitches to the eight VCs. The VCs will now convene for a private discussion and decide which startups they are keen to award funding to. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, the results. So don't go away. So to be a true entrepreneur, you really need that gumption and the innovation in you to bring the product to the next level. Is somebody who is really, really obsessed with a big problem and they're willing to make personal sacrifices to solve that problem to improve the lives of others. We invest to generate returns and value. Um, but you still want to find ideas and startups that have a purpose. We look for good companies with good ideas that can put great solutions on the ground that serve the people better. What makes a company worth investing in is definitely first the uh, people. Um, unfortunately, with a team that may not be competent in executing, even the most perfect and brilliant of ideas will not come to fruition. I think the most common mistake that startups make is they become obsessed with their idea and they continuously pitch their idea and they don't think enough about the execution. Ideas can pivot and uh, a deep understanding of your problem and the customers uh, allows startups to truly make the pivots that they need to make. It's really important that you build a community around you of peers, of people that can offer you advice and help with you know, connections to investment as well. A founder has to ask themselves, are they overvaluing themselves? Be humble, be realistic, and understand that someone's taking a punt on you, and always respect that. Welcome back to The Big Spark. The VCs and judges have undergone a round of intense deliberation behind closed doors. Who amongst these startups will take home the seed funding worth $1 million? Optionally, funds can be paid in USDC, a US dollar equivalent issued by Circle, which arrives in wallets within seconds. And now it's the moment of truth. First to hear the judges' decisions, Snap Robotics, Sai Krishna. Let's have you up here. VCs, who will invest in Sai Krishnan and Snap Robotics? Sai Krishna, we love businesses in industrial automation, deep tech and so on. However, we invest in companies that have been around for a while. Yours is pre-incorporation, uh, as I understand it. Yes. Would love to help you after the show. We can talk through some future ideas and guidance that we might be able to offer, if you're interested. Sure, thank you. There is no funding from here. Anyone else? No? I'm sorry, Sai Krishnan. Thank you for journeying with us. Thank you. Next up, let's have Salma and Andre from Tenang AI. So I think um, you really warmed our hearts when you gave a presentation. And we all know that successful business is about the founders. And so we're committed to putting 50K as, as part of your round. We invested in India in mental wellness and, and the company is really showing great results. So 50K from our side. We are also committing a 50K from our side. Congrats, well done. Yeah, you thanks guys. Best presentation of, of, the, of the day, if you ask me. Warp my heart. Uh, and uh, we'll be coming in with 100,000. Last call. Sebastian. Yeah, we'd like to consider 50K. Plus, what I want to explore is connecting you to my HR company. So maybe you can explore collaboration and synergies sure. there. Thank, Thank you. you. That is fantastic news.
you have raised a total of 300,000 Singapore dollars. Congratulations. Thank you. And now, please welcome Far Life Plus, Prof Chan and Poling. We could not land on a number yet, but what we'd like to do is continue the discussion immediately after the show, and hopefully we'll help you commercialize and build something massive out of Singapore. It's a very promising product. I would love to connect you. Some of our investors are one of the biggest pharma pharmaceutical companies and, and see how we can uh, help you scale. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so there is no actual commitment to funding for now, but I hope that what the VCs have said will help. Final quick thoughts from you, Prof. Well, I'm so glad that we took part in this and we have made so many connections. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And next, let's have Laura and Azri from Arcopay. Visa. Thank you, Laura and Asri, for a great presentation. Uh, I think construction is a large play for Indonesia, so very keen to commit 130k to this fundraise. John. Yeah, so at Hatcher Plus, our model is that we co-invest uh, alongside other people that know what they're doing. <laughs> so we're, we're happy to commit 75k alongside uh, size on Capital. <laughs> great. Anoush. So I love the industry where you're operating. Though it's a new market for us, but we are committing a 50K from our side. All the best. Thank you. Vanessa. We see a lot of synergies together with other portfolio companies at FinTech Nation. So we want to commit 100K today. Anyone else? We'll participate in the round. Believe in you guys. Uh, believe in the space. Super proud to, to continue backing you guys. Yeah. And that is $50,000 from Antler. Congratulations, Laura and Azri. Five VCs are interested to invest in your startup for a total of $405,000 Singapore dollars. <laughs> and finally, let's have Celebate Dr. Vignish. Anuj. We have a sector-specific fund through which we invest in these segments and this purpose, and we would like to commit 100K to your round. John. Yeah, we'd like to match uh, Anuj and, and put in 100K um, alongside you. Uh, uh, for We think what you're doing is, is fantastic. <laughs> You're also on the right side of history, uh, trying to fix this, so we'd like to commit 500,000. For me, you are the Dr. Rockstar, so we would like to add 100K in this round. For me personally, uh, I'm, I'm considering 50K, but I will also offer this to my company. And uh, if you are okay and subject to some data, uh, we are happy to take the $3.3 million round. Wow. A total of 4.15 million Singapore dollars is going to go into investing in Celebate. Wow. <laughs> We've come to the end of the first edition of The Big Spark. Tonight, a total of close to 5 million Singapore dollars have been raised for our startups. Thank you, thank you, VCs. And I also want to thank all the startups who have shared your business ideas with us. Once again, congratulations to our finalists. I'm Diana Sir, signing off from The Big Spark. I put my family through a lot and the only reason that they're okay with it is because they believe in me. Yeah, this, this is the best proof, yeah. For me to continue and also for us to, to be stable, it's not the end in any way, 
Right? In fact, more work starts now. The Big Spark has given us a chance to share our story, share our patient, and to actually make this solution come true. Hey, great job! We're a bit sad that the Big Spark is over, but we're also excited and can't wait to go home as well. Yeah, I miss my daughter. <laughs> For those contestants who did not get anything out of this from a cash perspective, I still think that at least the experience, uh, the guidance that we've given them, I think uh, it would have been helpful for them along the journey. But more importantly, not all businesses are meant to be VC-funded businesses, but that doesn't mean they're not good businesses. So I'm so happy we got a chance to showcase so many of them on this show. Exactly. The Big Spark can happen anytime, anywhere.